Good morning. My name is Dennis, and I'll be your service associate for the day. We are the North Shore Unitarian Church. In this community, we celebrate people from all walks of life. No matter how you make your living or how you experience the sacred, no matter who you are or who you love, we hope you will feel welcome here. We appreciate and acknowledge our spiritual home here on the unceded yet shared lands of the Coast Salish peoples. Welcome to today's Unitarian service, where we are ready to explore the interconnectedness of mind, body, and spirit through the UU lens of introspection and compassion, we will delve into the importance of destigmatizing mental illness, fostering understanding, and promoting holistic well being within ourselves and our communities. I'd like to invite Muhammad forward to light our chalice today. Muhammad is one of our new regulars who has recently completed stand-up comedy for mental health. We kindle this flame as a symbol of our gathering. While Muhammad lights this second candle of global concerns, a quote, every person you meet is struggling with something you know nothing about. We acknowledge the impact of world events on our collective mental health and to those directly affected by strife amongst their families and loved ones. <clears throat> We light this third candle of joys and concerns 
When we come to church, we bring with us the joys and concerns that are part of our daily lives. And we acknowledge all of the unspoken joys and concerns in our midst. Thank you, Muhammad. I invite Allison and Vox Lumina to come forward to sing Hope Lingers Here. The subject of today's service is deeply personal for me, both as an adult and as a parent. This past week, while trying to choose a topic for my men's group, I turned to Facebook and kept scrolling, seeking something, anything with depth, meaning, and purpose. Sadly, it took about 20 minutes before I stumbled across an Adam Grant bit outlining that narcissism is a superiority complex, while imposter syndrome is an inferiority complex. And humility is a commitment to seeing yourself as complex. It's about having self-awareness, not lacking self-confidence. The foundation of humility is accepting that you always have room for growth, despite your limitations, despite your self-sabotaging thoughts or behaviors. Each of us inherits a nature and nurture collection of predilections and traits that set us up for a lifetime of observation in the least and immense struggle at the worst. Every person you meet is struggling with something you know nothing about. Mental health is a particularly insidious beast. You might not be able to see it, you can't feel it, and you can't touch it. I remember as a young adult with young children feeling a particular sense of despair and even contemplating what suicide would look like. Was this a result of having suffered physical and mental abuse as a child, resulting in a feeling of being unworthy? 
I also remember my reluctance to let out my secret that I was struggling and to ask for help. Reaching out for help seemed like admitting a weakness or an inability to handle my own life as an adult. As a parent of a daughter diagnosed with psychoaffective disorder, these struggles were amplified a hundred times over. My own judgment and denial wanted so much to believe that these issues could be handled with enough love, with enough dialogue, or with enough time. In retrospect, it would have been easier to treat a severed limb. At least if there was severe bleeding, I could effectively focus on tangible treatment options. I struggled hard with this one. How could I help someone who probably couldn't properly distinguish reality from psychosis? How could I reach the person I cared most about when they didn't want to be reached? And how could I convince myself not to just give up, despite the hor horrible batting average of futile attempts? Sadly, a year and a half ago, my daughter was killed in a tragic collision of mental health and policing, as most people in this congregation know. Every person in this room has likely experienced dealing with mental health themselves, or has had to deal with the mental health of a friend or a loved one. And every person who has had to deal with this understands the leap of faith required to believe what they can't see to be at least real enough for the afflicted suffering to be acknowledged as real. The pandemic surely revealed more in ourselves and each other than any of us ever could have imagined. Anxiety disorders, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, eating disorders, substance use disorders, sleep disorders, stress-related disorders, psychotic disorders, disorder. In the context of mental health, a disorder typically refers to a condition that affects a person's thoughts, feelings, behaviors, or overall functioning. Mental health issues are complex and diverse and individuals may experience any combination of these issues or others not listed here today. Could I ask anyone here today to raise your hand if you feel you have experienced even one of these disorders? And raise your hand also if you have known anyone who has experienced even one of these disorders. And I see a sea of hands. So how do we approach mental health issues with empathy instead of judgment? What can we do to destigmatize mental health challenges? And how can we promote holistic well-being in our communities? Empathy involves actively listening without judgment, seeking to understand rather than criticize, offering support and validation, and educating ourselves in mental health to reduce stigma and increase empathy. Mental health is beyond any individual's control, and sometimes just listening is the hardest thing to do. I remember when my daughter, Danny would say wildly embellished or fantastical statements that I desperately wanted to correct. I quickly learned that trying to correct or argue for accuracy only served to invalidate and alienate. It took patience and practice just to sit and silently love without qualification. Promoting holistic well-being in our community involves getting involved. I have spoken here before on our family's personal journey to campaign for better resources and more understanding. People in crisis deserve dignity and support. In our campaign for justice for Danny, our collective community wrote countless letters and emails to every local and provincial politician and body we could muster. And some real change happened. Lionsgate Hospital 
in the past year installed a mental health ward, providing a dedicated facility with dedicated beds and professionals. The packed ride-along program was expanded to include plainclothes officers to accompany crisis-trained health professionals to appropriately address those in mental health crisis with patients in care. And if you followed the North Shore News recently, you've seen a couple of cases where those crisis officers showed up and successfully, after many hours, negotiated a healthy resolution. The RCMP has engaged a body-worn camera initiative to support an increased focus on training and accountability when confronting patently unsafe situations where mental health affected individuals are confronted with situations simply beyond their comprehension. Canada has also recently installed an 811 service where rather than calling 911 unless somebody is in severe physical harm, in which case you should still call 911, dialing 811 will connect the caller with a health professional who is trained to direct assistance to a registered nurse, a dietitian, an exercise professional, or a pharmacist. And in BC, this service is available in English, Punjabi, Cantonese, Mandarin, and even tele teletypewriter for the hard of hearing. Every person you meet is struggling with something you know nothing about. Imagination is a powerful creativity tool. We can use our imaginations to invent things, compose music, inspire stories, conceptualize something new, explore and envision solutions to problems. With imagination and flight of fancy, we can travel anywhere, do anything, and be anyone. It helps us to explore our perspectives, learn more about the world around us, and dream about what might come next. Imagination is one of the most powerful tools for improving mental health. Our thoughts can create a world of possibilities, helping us explore alternate ways of thinking and feeling differently. Imagination also helps us to break free from past experiences and construct new meanings in our lives. Through creative expression, we can channel feelings, freeing up energy to be used in constructive and positive ways. With imagination and creativity, we can control our mental health, expanding our perspectives and discovering new opportunities. When it comes to mental health, keeping your thoughts and attitudes in check can make all the difference. The good Dr. Seuss knew exactly how to make a statement that packs a punch like this one. Think left and think right and think low and think high. Oh, the things you can think up if only you try. If we all focus our energy on making sure our mental health isn't being compromised by negative or destructive thought patterns, we can create a wonderful world full of pos positivity and optimism. So don't forget these wise words from the good doctor himself. Hold on to hope, reignite your passion for life. Oh, the things you can think up if only you try. I'd like to call our ushers forward to please come forward to collect our offering. 100% of our offering plate collection today, unless otherwise specified, will be given to the youth program at Hollyburn Community Services Society to assist youth, youth with the emergency services, transitional housing, employment, work experience, and life and social skills development. Uh, for today's announcements, please join us after the service for coffee uh, at the back of the room here, or the narthex if you're looking for a $50 word. The Easter Celebrations Children's Choir will be rehearsing at 12 o'clock today, as well as the next two Sundays. It's still correct? Okay. The Climate Change Reading Circle will be held here at the Fireside Room on the first and third Monday of each month. 
and see our newsletter for details on the upcoming clothes swap on April 13th, where for $20 you can make off like a bandit. <laughs> Next week's service, Is This Better or Is This Better? by Bruce Grierson. And lastly, on our bulletin board, you'll see a form that says Connect with PACT, which stands for Peer Assisted Care Team. If you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or suicide, families experiencing challenges, drug or alcohol use, loss of reality, feelings of hopelessness or despair, social isolation and loneliness, or fear and anxiety, please take a number. There's a tear-off form there for your benefit. I'll call Allison forward to introduce our congregational song. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in hymn number 346, Come Sing a Song with Me. As we conclude our time together, may we carry the light of understanding, compassion, and support for one another as we navigate the complexities of mental health. Let us remember that in our unity lies strength, and through our shared journey, may we continue to foster a community of empathy and healing. Until we meet again, take care, stay resilient, and know that you are never alone.
backing up just a half a step. We extinguish this flame. <laughs> the world calls us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love. Blessed be. Thank you.